And here we go. This is Flash at In a Perfect World on the 12th of May, 2020. And I've got my code hostage right here at the ready, Miss Graham Z. You there, Mary? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Just checking it out. So... Uh, tonight I'm going to take a pass on thanking Grim. I did this stuff by myself for a change. I'm going to thank me. So, with that ego trip, why don't we go right to the bots and bodies there, Miss Mary. Say hello to everybody out oh. there. Oh, and oh, okay. this is in a perfect world. Well, yeah, we're in a perfect world. It's just, you know, sometimes perfection is like being a perfect pain in the ass. So, uh, in any case, over here in the RLM chat, right at top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know? And I got to listen to Grimmy's leftovers this morning, and mm, 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 very tasty leftovers. Thank you very much. Good brain food. I also see the lovely Moose Goyle is here, and I found Moose Goyle's long-lost twin brother. <laughs> on Twitter, and it's like, damn, this is impressive. I'm excited. So, it <laughs> didn't take much for me. I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here, as well as the Asmodeus Asmo. Soikolo is also logged in, and looky there, we got a Dayom Van Meter is here. Some duh in the chat, because everybody's got to have a duh moment. Flash somebody is also here, as well as Flimpy Work. Apparently, vowels are out today for Flimpy Work. Uh -oh. That's for the Y. Uh oh. We also got a Frumpy, as well as yours truly, Grand Z. And looky there, Ivy Don C from the Great Beyond is here <laughs> listening in. So the coast of Don C. Go figure. Yeah. Wow. Everybody, keep your spirits in check. Don's here. He's going, he's going to check his spirits. He's going to be in trouble. Looky there, we also got a Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 in the house, as well as Jay Dredd. Hey, Hansel. Hansel. Doing, hun? Uh, we have you our Hansel. Hansel. <laughs> I like to say that. <laughs> you <laughs> named him. <laughs> The one in friend, not the purple one. We got a Rob Works, and he fired up that bubbler just a little bit ago. Thank you ever so much, Rob Works. And looky there. Trust no one. Uh, not trust even no yourself. One, not even you. Yeah. That's the best. That's the number one one. The number <laughs> one one that you shouldn't get. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I also see Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM channel. Ooh. And Weathergore, because he's probably close behind trying to blow or something up her skirt so that he can catch Pete because weather doors become pervy like that. Mm. You know, bots can be pervs too. They're oh. Joe Biden, apparently. <laughs> um, Creepy Joe. <laughs> we got a woodman in the chat as hey, well. Woody. And the phantom. Uh, and the, the phantom, phantom is here. Oh, the phantom. The phantom. Beetle. Not beetle. Beetle, how beetle? you doing, huh? Hey, Beetle. Where's, where's Pippi? <laughs> well, hey, little headphones, a, little pippy headphones yeah. on. We got a CC66 going on, as well as Chaskura and Chloe is here, as well as that Cyborgian noodle. May you be touched by the Cyborgian Cyborg noodle. noodleness of it all. I know I'm touched, but oh, yeah. this, I'm sorry. Uh, we got an E-Man in the chat, chat as well as N-Siv, and Gromit is here. Matt, WJ2002, some Papa Papa Pond sauce is here as well as Quasimodo. How's that hunch going? You got a hunch? I got a hunch. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ritual is That's here. Not a, that's not, okay, it's a hunch. Ritual says um, psychotic. Rituals is psychotic. That's okay, honey, because I can't decide if I'm psychotic or psychic. I just know things, and it scares people. But, you know, it's like they say, don't suffer from insanity, enjoy every minute, and make everyone else suffer. <laughs> Look there, we got a sock puppet. We have. Yes, a sock puppet and an SLC Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, how you Mikey. doing, huh? 
There's Mikey. From you got Salt Lake City. Yes. In that. There's one in every crowd. And the Ooh, holiest Roger ever. Oh, ever. yes. Ami, 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 ami. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Z Pick is here. Z Picks, yes. Yes. I, yes. I, I smoked Z Picks when I was in Afghanistan. I wondered what made you act that way. I don't know. Now I've been off. Hmm. <laughs> I've been accused of being uh, high on drugs many times. And it, hey, but, what's that? Hey. What's that over there in the corner of your... What? Hey, I see somebody. Hey, I, see I know, somebody I know. You left your cellar door slightly ajar. Mm. And, you know, doors being ajar is really a new concept. But I looked in that crack. Mm. You know, most people tell you don't look in the crack. But I mm. do anyway because I'm nosy like that. And have my nose in other people's business. Don't you know? And you Apparently. know what I saw down there? Grimner. I thought... I saw another co-hostage. Yeah, it's Grimner. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Grimner, did he have you taped to the wall? Uh, no, no, not quite. Uh, <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Well, anyway. I was in a box, and I, and I escaped from the box. But, oh, a Grim in the box. Well, cool. This afternoon, Grimner suggested a few links for the show tonight. Now, I invited him along to read one of the links. Thought it would be kind of different. Oh, yeah. yeah, how the hell y'all doing? <gasps> it's Gwen. <laughs> Rob Work says, we have a runner. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't shoot. They, Don't they shoot. couldn't have us and change me. <laughs> oh, and I love that song, too, that you posted earlier. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Well, Grimner came up with a link tonight called Coincidence, Imperial College in UK is Origin of Coronavirus Panic and Global Warming Panic. So I thought, hey, Grim, feel like reading? <laughs> does, it sound, does, it, does it sound like coincidence? Yeah, I think it's very clinky dinkly. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you must you must have that mask up over your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's making your twinkle twinkle. <laughs> hey, oh, Lord. don't be saying that with the farmer. Right, well, I, I don't I, I don't I don't know if any of y'all listen to Coast to Coast on occasion. You Me? know you know the show. Oh uh, yeah. No, I okay. I, I probably really would get it at night. Much lately. Okay. Well, you anyway, know, last night they had G. Edward Griffin on there, talking basically about this, but. Uh, this is uh, written by one of his co-hostages. Uh, anyway, this is posted up on his website there, uh, needtoknow.news, G. Edward Griffin's site. Uh, and it, the title is, as, as Flash uh, stated there. Um, so uh, let's uh, – you want me to just go ahead and jump into it? You, you do whatever yeah. you feel. You're the guest. Make yourself jump, comfortable. Jump, you can jump. read it backwards, okay. inside out, every other word, however you like to do it. Okay. Let's kick it off with the, uh, uh, the intro by Mr. Griffin. Uh, it is perhaps not a coincidence that the global warming hysteria and coronavirus panic are both based on discredited computer models generated at Imperial College in the U.K., In this article, Patrick Wood, publisher of Technocracy News, delves into the history and personal biases of the faculty of this institution. It will become both these panic narratives were... Uh Uh-oh. ...restructuring society to accept technocratic collectivism, a system in which all humans are ruled by tyrants posing as scientists, supposedly for the greater good of the greater number. Uh, G. Edward Griffin, that's his uh, intro to the tier. Jump, jump, he says, jump. (laughs) (laughs) How high? So uh, on on, uh, Patrick Wood's introduction here uh, into this, nonsense that we're dealing with in the world. 
People want to know just how bad is COVID-19 virus and is fighting it worth the destruction of the world's economic and financial system while disrupting the lives of hundreds of millions. I'm going to go with billions there. He says hundreds of millions. Billions of people. The story behind this story will make it clear that things are seldom as they seem. In short, and uh, when seen through the lens of sustainable development, a.k.a. technocracy, the whole world has just been punked and then panicked into destroying itself over the phony COVID-19. The culprit? A world-class technocrat in Britain, Dr. Neil Ferguson, Ph.D., like that makes a difference to anybody, is a professor at the Imperial College in London, that bills itself as a global university. It is thoroughly steeped in sustainable development and more dedicated to social causes than academic achievement. In fact, Imperial is very well known for its alarmist research reports on climate change, carbon reduction, environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, etc., and so on and so forth. The problem with global warming meme is that it's a tired, worn-out racehorse that much of the world simply ignores. Global warming alarmists, Greta, have tried every trick in the book to stampede the world into sustainable development. They have knowingly falsified climate data, flooded the world with inaccurate academic papers, held the world meetings like the Paris Accord in France, threatened and bullied critics, created a global youth movement to shame uh, their leaders into action. How dare you? Uh, et cetera. All of these strategies have failed to usher in the United Nations Sustainable Development, a.k.a. technocracy, and show little promise of success in the future. What the sustainable development crowd needed was to put their non-performing racehorse, global warming, out to pasture and to find a brand new horse that could finally run and win the race to what the United Nations calls deep transformation. Uh, Yes, you're being transformed of the entire global economic system. The new horse is named COVID-19. A different horse, same jockey, same race, same finish line. Imperial College. Oh, the lovely Imperial. Oh, we lost him. What is Who that? My what? headphones. Okay. Are you? Yeah, you're back. It just for, bleeped out for just like two seconds. But you're back. Sorry. No. Okay. I panicked. All right. The president of Imperial College is Professor Alice Gast. Uh, she considers the college to be part of a new paradigm of the global. No, that we... promises to be a contributor to a better future. What? Uh, the, uh, yeah, you're yeah. here. It's just I think that we're just catching some like skipping in the headphones. It probably won't come through on the recording. I'm blown out. I've been through this before with wire. Oh, okay. I don't know. I... Yeah, it's yeah. We'll we'll have. I hear fun. you. Yeah, so we'll I, I hear me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've just had the in the first par- uh the opening statement there was like a two second gap and bleeped out and then when you came back again with the Imperial College. Just for a second or so. I think it, it's just on oh, the headphones. Rob said that Grim is blinking out. Oh. Which okay. I think you're over target, Grim, and that's why they're doing that. That that's probably true. It's probably true. Okay. Let's hey. just continue and have fun with the show. Yep. All right. Going on, Gast, uh, her name is spelled G-A-S-T, in case you're wondering, it's not Gast. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking like hot air. <laughs> this woman's got the vapors. Uh, understood, understood. <laughs> I thought it was my feet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gast also notes the, the three general areas of focus of Imperial are epidemics, shortage of natural resources, and environmental crises. In other words, the environment, natural resources, and epidemics 
are seen as intertwined and inseparable. The global university is indeed a new paradigm and one that radically transforms the traditional role of education into one of social activism. Success is measured by social impact on society and not according to scholastic achievement. Because who needs to know anything, really? Not in this world, right? right. Just, just, yeah. look at them, just look at what they're putting out from the various schools, and they come out as morons. So what scholastic achievement? <laughs> Yeah, scholastic is like worn out elastic in your underwear. It lets you down every time. <laughs> it drops down around your ankles. All right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Further, furthermore, the global global university is invariably framed as a champion of the United Nations sustainable development, and Imperial is no exception. The head of sustainability at Imperial is Professor Paul. Get this name, Lick Kiss. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no comment. All right, uh, <laughs> I'll I'll behave myself. <laughs> if my name was Lick Kiss, wow. <laughs> his web his web page states sustainability should run through the whole of college thinking and activity at all levels and across all campuses. Oh, really? No. Uh, a casual examination of the various departments at Imperial confirmed this statement. Sustainability, environmentalism, and climate change themes are seen everywhere. Seen. Themes. Well, mm -hmm. You know, sustainability is working really well for them right now because all of these college kids got sent home, and yet are their tuition funds being re Return to them? <laughs> Why, no. Imagine That's that. how they sustain the colleges. Yeah. Well, colleges right. make money anyway. They're for profit business. Yeah. Oh, of course. They do very well. Yeah. So, going on, the, the work begins. Once the re release, not uh, natural causes, the release of COVID-19 in Wuhan, was recognized as a potential pandemic, academic researcher, Dr. Neil Ferguson, evil bastard, uh, went on, to, <laughs> went to work developing a computer model, as all of his mm -hmm. previous computer models, to track and forecast its rapid spread. At the top of his field, <laughs> Ferguson, uh, is, I guess his field is con man. I, I'm not sure. Anyway, Ferguson is a professor of mathematical biology at Imperial College in London and has extensive experience in tracking other infectious diseases, such as the swine flu in 2009, dengue in 2015, Zika in 2016. Now I know what all... field he's standing out in the middle of. Yeah, we call that natural fertilizer out here. Yeah, all, all, of, those, all of those were supposed to be Globally deadly. Everybody should freak out. <laughs> it never, it never okay. happened. Never happened. Eek, eek. Is a, what? Eek, eek. I'm freaking out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ferguson is a British epidemiologist and a professor of mathematical biology at Imperial College, according to the WHO. <laughs> okay. Uh, Epidemiology is the study of the distribution of determinants of health-related states or events, including disease, and the application of this study to the control of diseases and other health problems. Various methods can be used to carry out the epidemiological investigations. Surveillance and descriptive studies can be used to study distribution. Analytical studies are used to study determinants. Oh, they love that, don't they? What's a map? Is Colombo, isn't he? Only with a British accent. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, much less of a clue. Wow! <laughs> wow! Damn! <laughs> so, so listen to his uh, medical uh, qualifications, I guess. Hmm. With a master's of arts degree in physics. 
He received a Doctor of Philosophy degree in theoretical physics. He has no medical or related degree, but rather chose to apply his education to use his mathematical skills by modeling the spread of infectious diseases. You got that, right? Yeah, no, he's a fairy tale writer. No medical or related degree. However, yeah, yeah. he does have a philosophy degree. Ah, <laughs> I was close. This he is writes. sounding more like Common Core every moment. <laughs> uh, I tell you. This sounds like words. something I made up on the door table. <laughs> yeah, it could be. In other words, Ferguson is a data-driven technocrat with direct access to policymakers around the world. According to the New York Times, and you can all trust. <laughs> so it's, it's not only who you know, but it's who you blow. <laughs> well, huh? well, I'm apparently. glad she you know, said it. <laughs> according, according to the New York Times, Imperial College has advised the government on its response to previous epidemics including SARS, avian flu, and swine flu, with ties to the WHO and a team of 50 scientists led by prominent epidemiologist Neil Ferguson. I don't know how he got to be an epidemiologist with, with, uh, with no degree. Anyway, uh, Imperial is treated as a sort of a gold standard. It's the mathematical models feeding directly into government policies. Oh, you gotta love them mathematical models, don't you? I I don't I don't love them. May. I think he's got Photoshop, and I think <laughs> he's creating this stuff. And yeah. everybody goes, "Wow, it must be true. It was on the yeah. internet." Well, or is it yeah. possible there's somebody on the internet worse worse at cut and paste than I am? <laughs> Uh, yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's not like you could just make up data or manipulate data, is it? Of course you can. That's no. how it's done. Oh, come on. No, Cirque, Cirque works in this business. This is what she knows. So, yeah, that's exactly what they do. You're being led down a uh, you're being led down an idea with numbers to show you what yep. you're expected to see. You're even told yep. what to see before they show you what to look at. It's very weird how they do this. Before any data is ever collected, this is the results we want. Yeah. 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 You know, it's like you have to vote. You have to pass it before you can read it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> have, we not, have we not had a lot of fun in the last 40 years, or is it just me? Oh, tons of fun. So Could, much fun we couldn't even begin to count. This stuff that it oh. were, the stuff that we're actually seeing happen in the world came from films. They made movies about all this stuff that we're actually physically acting out now it was all done in movies. And if well, you, yeah. okay, well, here's the beauty of this whole the hoax is if you do a little bit of reading or a little bit of even uh, look for links that have, you know, words out loud to listen to that you don't have to read, you can still find the truth out there. Right. The truth is that. Okay. Well, I found a a, a link. Cowboy posted it on um, uh, Real Liberty Media this morning, and it sums up the whole damn thing in t about forty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to uh, I'll post it. And I'm not going to play any of it live. But I mean, you guys got the uh, links with with literature to read. Unfortunately, the thing I found that was interesting is a video link. So I can't really, I'd have to look for like a PDF or something. Oh, uh, you know how I am on the computer. So we're going to, we're going to go with the links you guys found. But I just wanted to mention it because it's so coincidental that, uh, Isn't it? Yeah. well, <laughs> it's, it's a blast. You get interrupted by me and Mary through your, uh, your epic rant on your link, but Hey, it's good to have somebody new come around so we can interrupt them. Oh, yeah. She gets bored of interrupting me. I get bored of interrupting her. We kidnapped you. Yeah. <laughs> you kidnapped the Jew? Oh, no. Clean out my ears. Okay. Never mind. Uh, I'm, I'm Randy, did you wish to carry on? Yes, I, I wish to carry on. Sweet. Okay. Now that we got that background on Ferguson, let's get to Ferguson's COVID-19 study. Ooh. 
Early on in the COVID-19 outbreak, Ferguson began to advise officials in Britain and the U.S. on the spread of the infection, as well as ways to fight it. Thus, he served both as a researcher and policy advisor at the same time. Ferguson's conclusion that COVID-19 would kill as many as 500,000 people in Britain and over 1.1 million in the U.S. set off a tidal wave of panic that has not subsided. His policy recommend recommendations were just as shocking, namely that societies must be entirely locked down in order to survive. He's the guy behind all this. <laughs> I know, I know. That's, that's, that's a good evil laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> uh, on, on March 16, 2020, <laughs> Ferguson finally released his formal report, Impact of Non-Pharmaceutical Interventions, NPIs, to Reduce COVID-19 Mortality and Healthcare Demand. Some quick observations from reading his report. Well before publishing, he advised policymakers. His modeling study informed policymaking in the UK and other countries in recent week. Uh, comparable to the 1918 Spanish flu, it, right, uh, it represents the most serious seed in a respiratory virus since the 1918 H1N1 influenza pandemic. Applied this and previous models to the UK and US, we apply a previously published micro simulation model to the two countries, the UK and the US. They, the, there are two possible strategies, mitigation and suppression. The mitigation strategy uh, proposed social distancing, home isolation of the sick, home quarantine of relatives. We find that the optimal mitigation policies combining the home Grimmy bleeped out again. Home quarantine of those living in the same household as a suspect. What? I'm out? I'm here? No, you're Hello? back now. You're back now. Oh, okay. all right. You bleeped out for about three words. Oh, all right. I don't know what was going on, but. If it was those three words that they just couldn't have come out on the interwebs. Okay, well, I'll start the mitigation thing again. Because <laughs> <laughs> he has the two, mitigation and suppression. And the mitigation part is the proposed social distancing, home isolation of the sick, home quarantine of relatives. We find that the optimal mitigation policies combining the home isolation of suspect cases, home quarantine of those living in the same household as suspect cases, and a social distancing of elderly and others at most risk of severe disease might reduce peak health care demand, health care demand we're talking about here, right. uh, by two-thirds and death by half. Right. In spite, of, wow. in, spite of, in spite of reducing deaths by half, the resulting mitigated epidemic would still likely result in hundreds of thousands of deaths and health systems, most notably intensive care units, being overwhelmed many times over. Yeah, they're so well, overwhelmed, they're laying off workers. Yeah, yeah. and there's, there's vacant hallways. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anyway, so he argues that suppression is the only option. Uh, suppression, it means additional measures, including the social distancing of the entire population, home isolation of family members, school, hmm. long-term suppression will need to be maintained until a vaccine becomes available, uh, at least 18 months, probably more. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think instead of a vaccine, I think everybody just needs to be, you know, injected with a little bit of common sense skills, a little bit of critical thinking skills, and then they'll be inoculated against all this nonsense. Well, maybe, maybe hopefully, hopefully, with everybody being not in public schools all this time, they'll get yeah. some of that common sense. There you go. With any luck, with any luck. Uh, 
Well, I, I must say, because of course, because I live in this shithole's place, that's not so bad. The uh, <laughs> well, their protocols and their politics get a better result out of the people, I believe, because on local issues, the people have a, a voice; they get heard. Yeah. So when something big happens, they go to the queen, and the queen goes to her advisors, and what they did with this shit was slowly put everything back into where it started, you know. And right. the queen came out for the people's sake because this is a, a kingdom, you know. That's the way their policy works. They listen to their queen. And what Cirque told me was uh, they're not going to pursue any kind of uh, inoculation program, mandatory vaccinations or anything here. That was the final, you know, the final ruling on that particular. Because they were threatening it, you know, and it's been a, a big issue with the world lately. But sure, they're going to promise them the fucking moon like they always. The Danes are very nice people, but don't push them too far to get to get nasty. But they'll okay. say, you know, they'll say yeah at first. Yeah, that's sure. Aren't they the yeah. ones with the wooden shoes, or is those the ones in Holland? No, no that's yeah. Holland. That's the Dutch dude. But I think they had wooden shoes. the head with that. But this is the old country where they had wooden shoes then, too. I guess so. Right. Made them out of rocks. Anyway, now that we've got beyond the uh, Ferguson part here, let's analyze the Ferguson part. These uh, doomsday predictions, based entirely on computer simulations, similar to those used in climate studies were, were were believable enough that national leaders accepted them at face value. Wow. Worse, they also accepted Ferguson's policy recommendations, which were then implemented with precise detail, which is why you're all locked in your homes. Wow. Here are some of the more prescient excerpts from the report's conclusive section. Conclusion section. <laughs> all results demonstrate that it will be necessary to layer multiple interventions, regardless of whether suppression or mitigation is the overarching policy goal. However, suppression will require the layering of more intensive and socially disruptive measures than mitigation. The choice of interventions ultimately depends on the relative feasibility of their implementation and their likely effectiveness in different social contexts. Dude. Overall, the results suggest that the population-wide social distancing applied to the population as a whole would have the largest impact, and in combination with other interventions, notably home isolation of cases and school and university closure, has the potential to suppress transmission below the threshold of an R equals 1 required to rapidly reduce case incidents, a minimum policy for effective suppression is therefore population-wide social distancing combined with home isolation of cases. Now, as I'm reading these words here, hmm. you're probably thinking, that sounds so familiar. Hmm. It does. Yeah. Because all these words, you've heard them coming out of Trump's mouth, Fauci's mouth, Burke's mouth, uh, the, Pelosi's mouth, all of these exact things are, are, have been coming out of all of these idiots' mouths um, over and over and over again. Now, I, I'm going to stop, actually, at this point, uh, because I think you get the idea of what's going on here with this. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the link will be there in, in the blog, in the post-show blog, uh, for you guys to read the rest and look at the references and such like that. Um, but Flash is going to go on and uh, cover the other one about the man, this man Ferguson's models, about his statistical mathematical model. Yeah, I I put Are, that in the link in the uh, wire from Mary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So well, you guys are going to cover that part, um, but so you know where all this the reasons behind this craziness that's going on. Mm -hmm. Why they're all locked up. Why all the businesses are closed. Mm -hmm. Closed. Why all the uh, various sporting goods, campgrounds, whatever the hell. It's, everything's closed. Because this guy, 
and they listen to him based on his mathematical models. Or he's the fall guy to blame because they yeah, knew yeah, from the beginning the, this would be exposed as what well, it truly is. He, he is, he is, he is the, the point man of the group yeah, uh, yeah. that pushed this. I mean, yeah. you know, like it says, all the world leaders tuned in and listened to this guy's nonsense. Based upon all the world's a stage, and they're all just reading their lines. Pretty much, yeah. I agree. Yeah, he's, he's a, he's a, so, um, you you guys can go ahead and share the rest of it. I'm going to jump off and but listen to you on the air. I appreciate you doing that because I just you you don't usually send me anything, and I just thought, hey, it'd be a kick to have you come on and do a little reading, and me and Mary interrupt you here and there. Yeah, so, <laughs> thanks a lot for playing along with us tonight on In a Perfect World, Grim. Appreciate oh, it. Yeah, Grimmy, thank you. And yay, Grimmy escaped from the box. Yay! <laughs> All right, bye. bye. <laughs> Another hostage escapes. Oh, the shame. I know. Wow. So what did you think of that? I, I got got us a new co-hostage tonight. Sweet. Sweet. It was pretty awesome. And mm-hmm. I I really did. I Yeah, I had to push the mute button because I was really good. Oh, me it. too. Like, I was. I want to say something. Around. I want to be obnoxious. I'm no nope. Grimmy's reading. Grimmy's well, reading. right. He's doing good. But I, I think the whole point uh, of him reading out was to get to the end and make make the statement about it's it's a little too weird that these lines are so scripted. Every politician you see is using them, and the luxury I got living over here is there's a lot less people, so it's not so easy to bullshit. <sighs> You're more accountable. It's a smaller area. Yeah, you're you know, more, and yeah. when you got that smaller area and everybody yeah. knows each other or, you know, is something like familiar. That. Yep. Yeah. Well, st- well, then how did they get away with it in the state? You're in Kansas. They're in pretty bad uh, conditioning as far as uh, going along with the system right now, right? It depends where you go in the state. Okay, well, I'm asking uh, where you. Where they have the larger so, population areas. Yeah, where, people where, are yeah, but more where, inclined to go along with the herd. Okay, where have you been? Talk about where you've been so we know that you've done it because that's what people are lacking right now is the honest word of somebody that's physically done it to tell them what happened. You know, can you name a city well, or something? Hey, I drove from here to there and this happened. See, and I haven't, I mean, I've. We've been down to where uh, my hometown, Hayes, and, you know, I kept reading all this stuff about you have to have a mask on to go shopping, you have to do this, you have to do that, and I was fully prepared to walk up to the door and and um, participate, you know, start yeah. going in and yeah. have someone tell me, you need to put a mask on, and then I would look at him and say, you don't want my dollars, and turn around and walk out. <laughs> but I never, you know, I never ran into that. And apparently, everybody wants my money. So. Oh, you cracked me up. Yes, sir. You know, it's just, but then I, you know, I was talking with the farmer's <laughs> daughter. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. That sounds wow. like a joke. But, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> I was talking with the farmer's daughter and down where she lives, which is in southwest Kansas, <clears throat> um, the two bigger towns close to her, Garden City and Dodge City. Yes, Dodge City with the quote-unquote original boot hill, although it is not the original boot hill. The original boot hill is actually in Hayes, Kansas, where I'm from. But in any case, those hmm. places, one of them had like 800 new cases in a week and the other one had 600 new cases. Oh, and I said, are those really new cases well, or is that go. just what? they're saying and she said i don't know you know she doesn't really go out because she's got a a little one that's almost a year old and then a four-year-old and a six-year-old so she doesn't go out and about all that much anyway yeah and you know they're putting it out there and they're saying well it's because of all of this migrant workers and stuff which that's a nice way of saying there's a lot of hispanics down in those two towns Hmm. that you know when they get across the border and they go work at the meatpacking plant and then they get busted, they're back within two days. So yeah, it's okay. Um, hmm. So yeah, out in, out in this neck of the woods, you see that a lot, but I'm not, I'm not seeing, I see people walking around with the masks on. Mm-hmm. I see the signs. I see the little arrows. Um, and farmer and I yesterday had to run after mower parts 
and when we come back we stopped at Dollar General and they had little you know tape on the floor as to where you're supposed to stand and thankfully my dear friend Lisa B had shared something about she went to a store that they had an X on the floor and she said uh-uh, I have watched Roadrunner and Wiley e. Coyote cartoons, and I know better than to stand on that X. So, you know, I did not find any X's on the floor where I went, because mm. I would not stand on it. Oh. If there were some, because anvils fall on your head when that happens, when you stand there. Mm. I, I, I know, I watched cartoons as a child. I learned. <laughs> oh, I got a question for you. What? Did you like that link I sent to you on the wire earlier? Yes, yes, Whoa. I really enjoyed that. I shared it around several places. What did you think of it, though, when you, as you um, were watching it? God, I've eaten breakfast since then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I thought it was really very informative. A lot of the stuff that it had in there is things that I have done previous radios, you know, and that's that's one thing I'm noticing, you know, looking on Twitter and stuff and listening to other podcasts and videos is I'm hearing other people saying pretty much the same thing I said two, three, four years ago about politics in general. And, you know, now everybody else is saying the same stuff and I'm going, sweet, hmm. sweet. Hmm. I'm not the only one. No, but it yeah. sure seemed that way for a long time. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And, well, it's... it was like last night. I had to on Twitter. I just had to get it off my chest. Uh-oh. And I, I think I will just, I'll go and I'll read my little tweet because I think I'm in the Twitter twilight zone. Um, every morning when I open up Twitter, I look at it and I've lost more followers. And it's not, you know, apparently I turned a corner really fast and, well, the slackers got lost back in the dust. But um, I'm just, I'm nobody. I mean, my page is like a wasteland. It really is. Mm. I share some really fun, cool stuff. Mm. But Frumpy occasionally sees it or BB9. Mm. Hey, BB9, if you're listening. But other than that, you know, Vinny, I think, has been on a couple times. Not too many other than a chosen few ever mm. see anything, even when I comment on things. So I'm thinking Twitter's got me in a Twilight Zone kind of place. And that's, you yeah, know, that's okay. That's okay. I'm still planting those seeds out on the interwebs, and eventually that frequency will catch someone. But what mm. I said last <clears throat> night was before I head off to bed, I just have mm. to get this off my chest. Ah. More than 10 years ago, before it was cool, I was talking about Obamagate, you know, the same Dangleberry, only not yet POTUS, the puppet. So, you know, it, it's nice to see other people starting to talk about some stuff that I've been noticing for years. Hmm. So, eh, it gets around eventually. You know, the universe doesn't just drop that little brain food seedlet on one person. They drop it on multiple people and eventually others will hear so it's good it's all good are you sure so, i i think it's all good because i see more and more people mm. are starting to see things and make connections and they're i'm seeing a lot more what the fuck? although you're not supposed to say naughty words on twitter anymore because that will get you a, a scolding because mm. you know potty mouth yeah, you are. Well, I saw something unusual today. What was that? Well, I was going to the store to go order some uh, supplement today. And the line was a little long. So I decided instead of standing in the line behind eight people, I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette and then probably come back and be like two or three people. So I'm standing out there smoking my cigarette and then and we have a revolving glass door. It's a pretty good size. The guy's washing the windows. And here come these two young cops. They're from out of town. They're not familiar with the building. And I know I've never seen these two kids before. And one of them's even got his gun and they got the police uniforms. And they're trying to walk through the door. 
they don't realize there's any other doors. That's how I knew they you know, for sure they weren't from the area. And to tell them, hey, you can go around the side. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I anyway. actually two police at one time walking, not in the car. <clears throat> and by the time I got into the mall to go do my thing after my cigarette, I never ran into them again. So could have been anything, you know, but this town is so boring that the cops have time to try to walk through glass doors. Sweet. Well, you know, walking through a glass door is a lot less hazardous than, like, driving through one. An ignorant man would have made a big problem out of that in a mm -hmm. police uniform. Who the fuck are you standing in my way? Move. Do you see I need to walk through here? Yeah. I've yeah. You know, I've had my fill of American police, and it's just nice to be somewhere where they're you know they're trained to be a little bit more human, less aggressive. It wouldn't it wouldn't sell out here for them to be pushy and not wait a minute and oh there's a side door let's use that. Well, and I saw something earlier today. I don't remember if it was in RLM or on Facebook. Hmm. Um, the uh, cop that did the um, yeah the one from Washington him. yeah yeah they, they fired the, him yeah. he got fired mm -hmm. it's like ah oh, the 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 discapo does not like you talking out against them well they did at first when it didn't go viral when it went viral then it oh no 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 well it made him look bad <laughs> sure but it didn't until it hit a certain population then you know a certain number. It's like us. We're, we're free to say any fucking thing we like on this radio podcast anytime we want to. Till we hit a certain amount of people, then it's not going to be the same. Yeah. So, I relish my uh, anonymity in the world and use my voice to voice my opinion about what I see. There you go. Sometimes it's a drag and sometimes it might sound a little braggy, but... Uh, I don't know. I think it's more my my side of it is uh, I could be a pain in the ass here and cause people trouble and be all American, but going their way seems to be a lot easier. And, you know, waiting waiting to see what's going to happen instead of jumping to conclusion because that's what I do. Yeah. I, I I make up my mind in the beginning. I didn't get this old by waiting around to see what's going to happen. <laughs> you know. I made my my decisions, and that was the end of that. So we've got that to deal with. But Cirque's a little more patient in Danish than I am. So between the two wow. of us, yeah, well, between the two of us, I'm all jumping up and down screaming, this is a fucking hoax. We're all being fucking had again. People wake up. And my wife is the calm Danish. Well, let's see what this system does before we assume anything. But I never shifted my, you know. I listen to her. I just don't agree with her. Uh -huh. Hey, the, it's broken up relationships I've been in before. You know, where, wow, you're just a headstrong, you know, you won't look at the, we don't have that problem for some reason. We don't see the same thing the same way. But like me and you, when we ever come to arguing because we don't agree about who owns the color blue, who gives a fuck? It's not me, and it ain't you, so, yeah, let's fight about it. No, I have purple. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, the principle of it. But anyway, Grim threw us up another link. You want to do some reading? I posted it in um, your wire. I'll put it in the RLM feed. For the, yeah. If there's exactly. anybody left listening to us bullshitting around, because we've been talking crazy people. But, yeah, uh, Grim put up a, a second link for us for your... Listening entertainment this evening that Miss Mary might feel like reading a little bit. Ah, yeah, that's from ArmstrongEconomics.com. Hmm. And the title of it is, I have reviewed Ferguson's Code. It's a joke. So this is well, the rebuttal to the first link. This is what why he put him in the order. Because the first link goes into this one. Yeah, the and those in academia do not like the bum bum bum. 
parts. So <laughs> they tend to ignore these parts because, mm -hmm. hey, <laughs> I have a fancy hat that has a square on top, and I have a piece of paper that I printed off from my Photoshop hanging on my wall. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. Uh, you're a mean said, old lady. I, pardon me? You're a mean old lady. Yes, I'm a big old meanie poo poo head, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this young man says I have been asked by a source in Britain to review the Ferguson model code for my opinion. Just so everyone has some idea, the original program used by Ferguson was a single 15,000 line file that had been worked on for a decade, and by no means is this remotely sophisticated. I seriously doubt that Imperial College would want to go public with the code because it is that bad. So to put this in some perspective, just the core to conduct basic analysis in Socrates is about 150,000 lines of code. That is so complicated, it takes a tremendous amount of concentration to try and see the path it has available to it for basic analysis. That's Socrates way back in the day, one of them, they're sheet wearing guys. So, to try to keep this in traders' terms, reviewing the code reveals that um, this is just as stochastic, which is incapable of forecasting high, low, or projected target uh, price target expected to be achieved. Any trader knows that a stochastic, uh, stochastic. There you go, stochastic. Yeah, I'll get it right eventually. Probably when I'm done, but. Uh, they know that stochastic is a trend following measure, not a forecaster of a trend, or, nor a projection tool to say when a market is overbought or oversold. This clearly shows the vast chasm between trading models and academic models, where the money is never on the line. The documentation even states that uh, stochastic is simply defined as randomly determined, having a random probability distribution or pattern that may be analyzed, may be analyzed statistically, but may not be predicted precisely. In other words, they begin with presumption, and therein lies the first error. Ferguson's assumptions was wrong to begin with. Then this model is so old. How old is it? It's older than, well, okay, it's not older than me. But <clears throat> this model is so old that they recommended it to be run only on a single core processor as if we were dealing with an old IBM XT, which I have worked on one of those before, way back in the day. <clears throat> and oh my. Yeah. Oh. Talk about dinosaur. Mm -hmm. So, effectively, you start the program with what is called a seed. And that seed number, which is then used to produce a random number. Now, most children's games begin this way. And in fact, this is a version of what you would be similar to the game Sim City, where you create a city starting from scratch. And it simulates what might happen based upon the beginning presumption. So there are numerous bugs in the code, and the documentation suggests to run it several times and take the average. Uh huh. Well, this is just unthinkable. Pretty obvious, actually. But a program should produce the same result with the same data from which it begins not one of those that gets multiple answers like Common Core, and then you take the average in order to get a correct according to the Common Core teacher answer. Uh-oh. Okay, You're at living again. In. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Threw me so, off, you big bullet. I know. <laughs> Therefore, there is no possible way this model would ever produce the same results. In reality, this model produces completely different results even when beginning with the very same starting seeds and parameters 
because of the attempt to also make the seed random. Hmm. So this is not even as sophisticated as SimCity, which is really questionable. This is where the Imperial College claims that the errors will vanish if you run it on an old system in a single threaded mode as if you were using a 1980s XT, as if. So in programming, How you so? run what is known as a regression test, which is rerunning a functional and non-functional test to ensure that previously developed and tested software still performs after a change. Now, in marketing terminology, it's called backtesting. In the most unprofessional manner imaginable, the Imperial College Code does not even have a regression test structure. In other words, it's not even a house of cards. So, they apparently attempted to, but the extent of the random behavior caused by bugs in the code to prevent that check. On April 4th, 2020, Imper Imperial Car let's start that again. <laughs> On April 4th, 2020, Imperial College noted, however, we haven't had the time to work out a scalable and maintainable model of running the regression test in a way that allows a small amount of variation but doesn't let the figures drift over time. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much what it means. Now, this Ferguson model is such a joke, it's either an outright fraud or it is the more, most inept piece of programming I may have ever seen in my life. Wow. There's no valid test to warrant any funding of Imperial College for providing any forecast based upon this model. This is the most unprofessional operation, perhaps, in computer science. The entire team should be disbanded and an independent team put in place to review the world of Neil Ferguson, and he should not be allowed to oversee any review of this model. In other words, this model is so anorexic, it's mm. almost back to dust. Damn. So, the reasonable conclusion that I can reach is that this has been deliberately used to justify bogus forecasts intent for political activism, or I must accept that these academics are totally incapable of even creating a theoretical model, no less coding it as a programmer. There seems to have been no independent review of Ferguson's work, which is unimaginable. A 15,000 line program is nothing. I will be glad to write a model like this in two weeks and will only charge 1 million instead of the 79 million. Yoinks talk about a fleecing. Ooh, and there was no lubrication used whatsoever in this case. Now, if you really want one to work globally, no problem. It will take a bit more time and the price will be at a discounted only 50 million on sale. But wait, there's more, because no refunds are accepted, as is the deal with Imperial College. Dun, 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 dun! These are the learned people in the ivory out towers of educraption that are letting you know what policy makers should be telling you, wow. because they're so smart. I sense I just I sense anger in your tone. <laughs> um no, it's not no. necessarily anger in my tone, although I did just I got booted. I got booted from the R Lumma Numma 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 Wow. You're probably bad. You were being I probably Yeah, was. you're bad. It's not your I fault. Was, Are you logging back I was on? Making fun of the common coreish academic models. Well, yeah, but that was beside, well, that didn't really have anything to do with that. what you're reading, though. You're just throwing in your other stuff. But, yeah, I, it's hard to believe that we're in this bullshit with this many other people that are so easily bullshitted. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. But here we are, and there's there's politicians and 
intelligent places where they speak English that are talking stupid and jibber-jabber and lockdowns and gloves and distance and everything that is the exact opposite of what it takes to fight the common cold is what they're forcing on everyone. Well, they're actually giving you the common cold. And they're giving you all kinds of other diseases on top of it all because basically, like that video said earlier, <clears throat> a virus is merely a poisoning of the system. I mean, that's, that's the breakdown that I got from it is viruses are merely a poisoning of the human body system. And <clears throat> if you listen to some other doctors, they say basically a doctor will say it's a virus if they have no freaking clue what the hell it is. So they say it's a virus. Take a pill. See me next week. Yeah. So, in other words, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Oh, you feel worse? Here, have another pill. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. It's the old muffler bearing story at the mechanic. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Sounds look, like you might need three of them. Blinker fluid. You better re add up some more <laughs> blinker fluid in that car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, my favorite was the muffler bearing. But whatever. Oh. Uh, people didn't know. They listened and go, yeah. Uh, hmm, what? And instead of questioning, they just nod their head. Well, yeah, because intelligent sources say, well, academics say, you know, maybe you ought to check and see what those academics are saying. Well, it's, you know, and actually look at. I'm at saying that what those. It's not that. It's not that complicated. It's it's even on. Worse situation than that. If people see it on TV, they believe it. Yeah. And I, well, I've heard... Swifty says hackademics, which hackademics mm. works better because... Hey, Moose. Yeah, then they're hacking up a hairball. But I've heard these stories behind all the, the stories. I've heard the truth about a lot of things from hippies and dippies in my day. And people would tell me all these outrageous stories when I was younger. And I, ah, that can't be true. No, no. Now here I am, and I've been convinced that what these guys and gals were telling me when I was young is true. It kind of opened up possibilities for me that other people don't seem so willing to use. Yeah. Like when uh, I saw that link this morning that Cowboy Tech put on the RLM, uh -huh. the information wasn't new. It was that it was on video that it was new. These yeah. are stories and rumors and stuff you heard about, but wow, where do you find a printed copy? And now you got these nerds on the internet that have taken the time to do exactly what couldn't be done 20 years ago, and that's documented on film. Show it to everybody. So Yeah, and you know what uh, I did? I downloaded it on my computer, so in case it gets deleted, I can I can reload. Mm. It's like... Okay. And what a lot of what a lot of people on minds have been doing is reminding if you're posting something that's important that came off YouTube, prepare for it to be pulled. So try to get it over to uh BitChute. Yeah. So BitChute yeah. hasn't started holding back from us yet. You gotta know what you're looking for. It's harder to navigate over there. But if you well, know what you can there's another one that Gary L has been sharing, and I don't think I have a tab open on it, but it's a um, a Utah. Or, uh, well, I'll tell you, if you find it, we'll put it in the notes, and you can promote it on the, in the notes of the show. You've mentioned it, whatever it is, and if you find it, we'll, re, we'll bring it back up again. Don't get frustrated. Yeah. Make your back it's hurt. A, well, it's a video site that, that posts stuff that gets kicked off of YouTube. And yeah. Less YouTube and more other places. You know? But, hey, yeah. people are in love with that. Oh, I got a thousand friends bullshit. You know? Yeah. They think yeah, big well, numbers. You know. It's not about all that, man. Small groups passing around the same fucking information. That's not bullshit. That would be a better start than what we've been doing. Yeah. So I'm going to stay small and you know, stay uh, with the Real Liberty Media. Just do it like that. And I'm all the way over here in Denmark. So, hmm. But there's a lot of different states represented, so to speak, by different people in the Real Liberty Media, coast to coast. 
Yeah. You know, it's not like everybody's living in one city. <laughs> yeah. Well, that um, coast to coast, uh, Nur- Nuri, George Nuri, I I can't listen to him. Well, what I meant was I can listen to Cowboy Tech, who's in Oregon. I can yeah. listen to uh, Miss Kate, who's in Florida, or Sock Puppet, he's in Florida, or Frumpy, mm-hmm. he's in Canada. So I can get information about other places from reputable sources that I know aren't going to bullshit me. You know, they're going to tell me exactly what the fuck happened, one way or the other. Yeah. So, well, that's a nice thing to have in this modern day with all the bullshit blowing around. It's hard. You can't pick and choose. I can't. You might be able to. Ah, fuck me. I can't do that. If I think somebody's full of shit, fuck them. They're full of shit. Why listen? So I give people that I don't think are full of shit the exact same treatment. You know, if I believe you, I believe you. And when you tell me something yeah. that's not so, well, either you got misled and didn't realize it, or I got fucked, and we'll work that out when we get to it. Yeah. But, yeah, trust people. Ah, I trust everybody in the world to be exactly what they truly are. And it's not my problem. It's theirs. <laughs> yeah. Well, and once yeah. you realize yeah. what you see them as. It's me. Yeah. 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 But once you realize that, then you're forewarned, forearmed, and then you can just go, okay, I, I see. I see what you're doing. I see what you are. And I'm just going to move along. But, you know, there are times when I do, I intentionally go out of my way to to check, you know, some of those. I ha, I don't go to CNN. I just can't, I can't make myself go there. Mm. But, you know, I go to, you know, like, Yahoo News and, and MSN and some of those places just to kind of see what they're talking about. Now, mm. I haven't been to Breitbart in, or not Breitbart, um, Drudge. In forever because Drudge pissed me off a few years ago, and so I'm done with Drudge as well. But you know, you see some of this stuff, and you go, hmm, hmm. And uh, every once in a while, there's a broken clock out there that you stumble across at the right time. And but for the most part, it's nah, nah, bullshit. I call bullshit. Well, it just so, seems to me that after all these years. If we're going to be in 2020, this is where flying, you know, cars and automatic everything was supposed to, and we got locked down in our own homes, you know, supposedly, uh-huh. and and told to stand apart in public and not to talk to each other and wear masks and gloves and everything that they're telling you to do is made up bullshit, and there's no way in this fucking world that you're going to get what they claim they're protecting you from by following their directions. If anything, you're going to get it worse. Yeah. Okay. But do you realize how much listening a human being has to do in this world to make that decision on their own? It's not a decision somebody else made for me. I came with it all by myself. I went, you know what? This is all bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and from fucking well, and day that's one, much right? the way it has to work with everyone. But, everyone has to come to it themselves. Okay, but I was going to brag for a minute because from day well, you just keep bragging. Day one of this uh, voluntary crap here, I didn't stay home. I didn't put on a pair of gloves. I didn't put on a fucking mask. I didn't keep my distance. I acted just like I always do. And here we still are, two months later, and you know what? Yeah. Nobody died from getting the coronavirus from me. You know how we know that? How do we know that? Because nobody's died since, I can't remember the last death we had here. It would be, everybody would know about it. It would be big talk. It's a small town. Somebody dies. Woo. Yeah. So, no. This is yeah. like a retirement village. I mean, crap. Oh, sometimes it's so quiet. You brought this up while you were talking. I was thinking about this part. When I'm spray watering my plants, up sometimes upstairs, you know, in the morning time, it's so mm-hmm. quiet in the house, I can hear the, the soil cracking from the water shifting through it. 
Wow. Right. And I grew up living in loud places and, you know, cities and this, that, and the other. So I'm so sensitive to that, that when there's no traffic, I can actually hear things I would never even notice because they would be drowned out by all the other noises. So this little uh, stay in Denmark is... I don't know, it's just opened up other doors for me that would not have happened any other way, I guess. You know, like being able to hear the soil crack when you water your plants. You know, it's just... Yeah. I guess it's something you'd have to do it to appreciate it one way or the other. And if you don't, you're probably not a plant person. And if you are a plant person, which I'm learning that I have become one, <laughs> like the cat. Yeah. Sir so gets me a dog. I get adopted by the cat. The dog does. The dogs with her all the time. I got this cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a boy. Boy, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got it so tough, Miss Mary. <laughs> I know you do. No, the life. I, 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 I. But still, okay. So I, what I was saying is, as as the things progressed and and the rest of the society is caught up to where I started at. Uh, I don't feel people are treating me any differently than they ever have before, but I got noticed for standing my ground. Well, yeah. Mm. You are rather noticeable, even though you are short. You are kind of noticeable. A couple of weeks, I I mentioned this this little short story. I was in the grocery. A guy with a wheelchair came in. I couldn't figure out his mood, but he was wheeling around in a chair. I just assumed and I ran into him t- today again, and we had the hello. So I went, wow. You know, because this guy's humping himself in a fucking chair trying to get into the grocery. It's not real comfortable to do what he's doing. And he still, as he passed by, said hi to me. So I thought, fuck. You know, instead of, he could take advantage of his position and just ignore everybody. He doesn't. He's a nice guy. Well. Well, some people wheelchair bound are uh, they're unpleasant to be around. Mm-hmm. And this guy's not yeah. on a motorized. He's doing the thing with his hands, pushing the wheels with you know gloves. He's a strong looking guy. Like he must have been in an accident or something. It doesn't look like he was born that way. And he seems like he's got a little bit of a temper by looking at him. You know, some people you can hey, you look a little hot tempered. <laughs> but I always seem to catch him in, in a good mood well that's a good thing well, I would hope I, I don't know maybe it, it maybe it's not maybe I'm not fulfilling my bad guy image by pissing him off <laughs> I've, oh, yeah. I've upset the bell <laughs> well it's see I have to pass on my you know my thing to the younger guy now because I'm old I don't do the younger guy thing anymore well, that's a good thing. Well, Ash was looking for me today in the room in the Arlen. Said, uh, tomorrow we can get together, go smoke one somewhere. But today it started to rain. He was stuck in the rain looking for me too. What are you doing? Tim? Not much. Stuck in the rain. <laughs> well, because of the uh, the Danish society, they have their housing has uh, legalities to it, like states, certain states in America. And if the kids are living under, like, some kind of state help kind of apartment thing, Uh they're non-smoking because of the state intervention. So it kind of fucks your life up if you're a smoker. But it's a lot nicer to have a big apartment than no apartment at all. (laughs) So they compromise. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't want to break the rules and lose their house. So they go out or away. To do their little dirty habits. Well, that's a good thing. I don't know. I think I don't live in the duality know. like that crime and punishment crap. You know, if I spent all my time looking for people to punish, I would never have any fun. I'd just be out punishing people all the time. So, eh, seems like a drag. Well. Not, not that there's not profit in it. Or any of that. There's lots of money to be made, but eh, not really my thing. I'm a I'm more of a lover than a killer. 
know what I mean? <laughs> Vern. You do, Vern. <laughs> well, I don't... Yeah, I don't have much of a choice being married to Cirque anyway. Boy, that really put a dent in my bad guy suit. Jeez, I'm telling you. I know. Well, you know, Circle kind of has this way about her. Yeah, well. What a problem to have, I suppose. <laughs> I, I'm being syruped to death in my old years. <laughs> <laughs> I, some, last night it was cookies. <laughs> oh, Yeah, man. I know. Not the cookies. <laughs> yeah, well, we have this uh, brick building that's, uh, it, for years it was just in disarray and needed to be torn down. And we never did bother with it. Then all of a sudden we started to do it. And we're, we're like, I don't know, got 20% 20, 20 of it left to, to finish, to get 100% out of the job. And it rained today. <laughs> Aww, yeah. man. But you know, see, she made me cookies so that, you know, I would go out and do a little bit more on the outside. And, of course, I got my cookies, but, you know, I told her, God likes me better. Watch. <laughs> Watch what happens. Ah. See, so I get, ah. right, and the way it works, I got this bug. I think I'm going to go do the store early because I ain't going to want to do it after I hump rock. So I go to the store and I come back and I hump two buckets of rocks and I go, I think it's going to rain. I go inside. It starts to fucking rain. <laughs> so, wow. I'm so, I'm so psychic. You called down the rain. No, yeah, I, you are. I got the sense to get out of the see that things. That's what I mean. People can look at the same exact response or finish or end or whatever. And come up with a different way it happened. No, I just had the sense of coming out of the rain. That's all. Nothing special. I just knew it was going to do it. And it did. Ah, I found that other link. It's videos.utahgunexchange.com. Mm. Uh, did you put it in the RLM feed so I can post I'm it? I'm getting ready to do no, that. No, that's the important part. I'll put it in the notes after because... Uh, I threw that Cowboy Tech link in there for the notes for people. you got to see that. If you're listening to the show and you, you've got 40 minutes, if you don't, listen to it in pieces. This thing will get you. And what it pretty much does is shows you the truth about all the stories you've been told for the last, what, 40 years? Probably 45, 50. Because all this, as far as being public knowledge, has not been public knowledge. Medicine was, yeah. wasn't was for profit legally until, what, the 60s, something like that, where it got this out of control where they thought they could own you forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm I'm guessing on the years. I thought you might be more definitive with your vast knowledge and ability to click-click. <laughs> well, um... I think it's always it's always been a for profit. It just wasn't really showing a profit until, and I don't remember the exact year when it, you know, when all of that part came about. But yeah, it mm. was once once good old John D. Rockefeller. I think that's what his name is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that starry sob. Yeah, yeah. got involved yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. Well. And see, things like that, those kind of ideas, the Federal Reserve Bank and how it became. And when people told me these things when I was younger, I thought they were kind of, you know, making up stories to be entertaining. I had no, oh, wow. It was really weird looking back on it thinking, ah, what a bunch of weirdos I'm growing up with. And, what, you know. and then when I'm about 28, something made sense out of all of it. Like, Holy fuck. Uh, they were right. <laughs> so, yeah. I got lucky. I don't know. Anybody else probably would have uh, dove head first into the system, tried to make money. Oh, Dad said it was in 73. It was under Nixon. Nixon did an awful lot of dirty dealing. There you go. I knew there'd be somebody in there. I was going to ask, yeah. too. Tricky but, Dick. Yeah. No, Mr. Dud knows a few things, eh? 
We, yes, he does. We, and you're welcome, Mike. Yeah. Uh, hey, we got a whole group full of people on the Real Liberty that they post the uh, stuff that's important on their side of whatever they're looking at. And we cover all the sides. Yep. You know, Grim does not tell you you can't post shit here. No, that's what the other members do. <laughs> We're a bunch of yeah. pompous. We're a bunch of pompous old fucking anarchist scum. Don't that like. That hurts my eyes. Stop posting it. Yeah. Why don't you just don't stop look looking. at it? Yeah, it's what the Iggy yeah. buttons for. You know? See, humans were designed to where if they didn't like something and no longer wanted to see it, they were designed to where their head pivots on their shoulders. <laughs> So you can turn your head and look the other way. Uh, like an or, owl. <laughs> or, you know, eyeballs do roll up <laughs> and roll down. And as an added bonus, you do have eyelids that close. Wow. So if you don't wish to see something, oh, and, but mm -hmm. wait, there's more. Yeah. For those of you that yeah. tend to be a little bit on the digitally challenged, Side, like me, take those digits that are attached to your hands yeah. and put them over your eyes. Oh, yeah, I could do that. That would be easy. Yeah, because I don't have to drive anymore. I, I don't drive a whole lot anymore. Sure. <laughs> well, seeing that whole COVID thing and that stay at home and all that fun shit, I really think the universe thought she's not going to do it, she's going to get her ass thrown in jail. So it made me come up short. <laughs> it, I, I hit an immovable. Well, actually, I think I was the immovable object. Then something hit me. And so, therefore, I was not out and about for several weeks. Yeah. But Well, you're back. Well, you're back mentally. I can tell that part. Yeah. You do sound yeah, now, strong, stronger than you did the first couple of shows. Today, today is better than yesterday. Yesterday was not, mm. yeah, because I was pretty worn out from all of the traveling and walking mm. and, yeah. It's called excess, you crazy old yes. boss. Yeah, you know how to I say know. it, excess. That means too much of a good thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey. I got to see several siblings, though, and I know. see my mom yeah, off, yeah. and she's down staying with another brother for a week, so... Mm. I no, I appreciate all that. I was just writing you because, well, I know you're giving me shit because I have a tendency to be an overachiever, and every, yeah, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. was telling me, and I have a little brother that messed up his back as well, and he said, "What do you mean, you're up and?" Because he was giving me shit, and my oldest brother said, "Hell, when I got hurt, I was in the recliner for a year." That's no. probably why too, because they they wasted all that recovery time lagging. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I have a hard time being in the recliner for, oh, you know, a couple days, hold, alone. Hold the mic for a second. I'm going to go get a piece of paper out of my pocket. I want to bring up this hold, chatter. Hold the mic, huh? Yeah, I'll be right back. Oh, Grimmy has a Nutter Brutter. I'll have a Nutter Brutter peanut butter sandwich cookie. It's a Brutter from a Nutter Mutter. No, I don't have any Brutters from a Nutter Mutter, but I do have, I do have several Brutters. I got ten Brutters. As a matter of fact, no, not ten. I got seven. I'm lying. There's ten of us. That, yeah, I got seven brothers. That's a that's a lot of brothers, utter brothers. So I'm rambling. I'm sorry, Mary. <laughs> yeah, well, I. That's okay. The reason uh, I wanted to make sure I had the right name because you know how bad I am at repeating things from memory. This. Oh, me. Okay, I got this from the link this morning, from uh, the thing I was so impressed with Cowboy putting up. Yeah, that is, that is, and you know, he sent that to me in a message on RLM as well, so I got it from both you and Cowboy. It's like, booyah, okay. stereo, now, go for it. I, I've been telling you since this whole thing started, I know I have an uh, ear infection, my sinuses, uh -huh. because of my smoking. All right, uh -huh. so since... I've been doing the radio all through this whole thing. I've not been bedridden. I've been tearing down concrete wall, blah, 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 blah. But what I didn't mention, well, maybe I did mention this. I've been uh, taking vitamin C, okay? 
and uh-huh. I've been taking zinc. And uh-huh. here, yeah, here it's called zinc too, just spelled with a K. Uh huh. But in the, I was watching that um, link that Cowboy put up, and there was a missing component. You know how Larry talks about his discovery was a discovery because he added something to it to look for. And uh-huh. when, okay, so I was listening to the link, and then the part about potassium sulfate. Uh huh. And here it's called calcium. So I went down oh. to, yeah, I went down to where I get my vitamin C and my zinc. And I knew that they'd be able to get it, but they didn't stock it. So I asked the girl, hey, can you order this for me? And I'll have it next week. Sweet. Right. But I can't get, uh, I wanted saffron tablets. I can't locate those. I'm working on it. But in, see, different countries. It's all these fucking petty laws. They don't got nothing to do with law. They've got to do with, you know, kickbacks and favors. And control. Yeah, and basically. So you can't buy this, but you can buy that, but this, but blah, blah, blah. It's just Denmark. Yeah. Little America. <laughs> yeah, see, and, and there's, uh, like, my friend Catherine over in Ireland, every once in a while she will send me a link, and I'll go click on it, and that's not available in your country. Mm-hmm. Really? They well, can watch it in Ireland. Why the hell can't I? We're supposed to be the freest country in the world. What the hell? Okay, well, but that link explains in layman's terms how the Spanish flu got nailed with the title the Spanish flu and just oh, yeah. what it just truly is and how the people that contracted what they called this Spanish flu contracted it. It's not a flu at all. Actually, yeah. oh, I read something mm-hmm. about that probably three years ago. Okay, so if I'm correct, my assumption is that the component missing is potassium sulfate from uh-huh. your diet. Well, what I learned from you guys on the internet since I started this internet journey in Scotland was that this is the answer that I'm getting this weird shit that people are telling me on the internet. That's really uh-huh. the truth. And this weird stories you heard in the bars when you were in your you know, 20s growing up, that was mm-hmm. the truth. But all the shit in the middle was a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Well, I was a hard, you know, come on. Other people are going to believe the rantings of a, you know, an anonymous voice in the radio from some nondescript location in the interwebs. <laughs> but I got a feeling that the, the little crew that we've amassed over the time we've been doing the radio, they're loyal. Because uh, I go over and check out our numbers on, uh, what do you call it, BitChute, because I like BitChute. And there's always a little yeah. group follow, yeah, follows along, see what we're talking about, what we're up to, where we stand on our shit. But uh, I don't think the world's still desperate enough yet. They don't need us. They don't. They don't even know they need us. Just give them a little more time. I figure about July. Well, they're still in the process of figuring out what they don't want. You know, a lot of times when you're focused on figuring out what you don't want, because that's really in your face right now, and you're going, no, I don't want that. You know, so they're not seeing off the in the periphery of things that, hey, look over there. They're doing something that I, I do want. I want to I want to go over there and do that. I don't want what you're putting in my face. Get that out of my face. Uh, I'm going over there. Well, and so that's kind of where I see a lot of people are at right now is they're still in the, the um, yeah. I don't want this. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm still, you know, I still, I'm not saying I'm not in it. I'm just saying that I'm not focusing on that mode so much anymore because ah. like, you already know. I don't yeah. want that. So well, I'm coming yeah. up here where the fun stuff is. Okay. Well, yeah, that's where the rope, rope and barbed wire you know, comparison comes through because I don't feel free completely. I you know yeah. I'm a married guy in the first place, but I I felt I felt that uh, lack of a you know freedom because things were being forced on other people. You know, they weren't being forced on me; it was being forced on them. And I think that, that oh, I guess they call it empathy. Ooh. I don't know. Cirque says, yeah, you're being empathetic. And I'm thinking, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being selfish in my own unique way. 
because I want to be able to say no at my choice, not somebody else telling me I, I got to, you know, you can't do this. Why the fuck? If I can't do this, why not? You know, it was like walking by the, the hairstyler today. They're open. They're cutting people's hair. I yeah. got the I got the right to go. I don't want to fucking cut my hair. Now, what if they weren't open and I did want to cut my hair? Then you know my rights being infringed upon. <laughs> you know, not yeah. like I'm ever going to do it. It's just just because a system has the ability to fuck me up like that irritates me. I'm that selfish. You know. Yeah, you are. Yeah, uh, the bar is going to open on the 18th. They finally gave bars and restaurants to go ahead. Fuck. It's been Oh, really? And everywhere else, bars are open. Well, no, not bars, but yeah. Okay, bars. Right, yeah, because you can go to the grocery or to the uh, kiosk and get liquored up all you like. But you can't go to the bar because you could get the corona flu and die. And yeah. there's still a few people going to believe that crap because they want to. You know, there's a lot of people that they got the corona flu because they went to bars and they got it without the line. Mm. You know, if you get your corona without the line, mm. you're going to have problems. And now they have the beer flu. So well, there you go. What do you think is worse? The embarrassment of admitting that you've gone through all this last few months of absolute stupidity, supporting it, and find out, oh, boy, was I wrong. How how do you do that? Or do you stand your ground and you keep being an idiot saying this corona crap is true? Because none of it is. It's a bunch of exaggerated bullshit. Well, you know, if they want to keep up this whole corona crap is true, then go by all means. Shelter in place. Go home. Mm. Lock the door. Mm. Throw away the key. Mm. Be afraid. Mm. Just stay out of my way because I think it's bullshit. Should have started out that way, but it didn't. See, that's the point. Well, that's the point I'm at. Is because this was, yeah, this was an opportunity to abuse something, aka everybody. Hmm. But it's not seen as abuse. It's seen as that they're helping us. It's for our own good. Anytime someone says it's for your own good, my butt puckers. <laughs> yeah, government. Oh, jeez. Well, yeah. any kind of do-gooder, you know, I mean, fuck, even Batman was really a criminal, you know, disguised oh, yeah. as a do-gooder. He's breaking every fucking law there is to break, but hey, he's Batman, he can do it. No, he can't. Yeah. We'll, we catch him, he's fucked too. Wait a minute, didn't you just save everybody? <laughs> the, the hypocrites... Yeah, well, and, no good deed goes unpunished. It, it seems that the hypocrites in, in seats of decision and the control... And the lengths that they've proven themselves for the last three, four months. How far they're willing to go to lie to every fucking body that'll listen to them. And if you don't listen to them and you show dissent, they'll shut you down. I'm telling well, you that face, not Facebook, the uh, YouTube shit. Links pull left and right. Something that didn't meet the quality standards of their community or some bullshit. That... That must have meant it hit us. They were telling the truth. We had to pull it off before you could see it. <laughs> wow. And that yeah. kind of, I mean, the land of the free, Mary, please. Well, and see, to me, mm. it was more of a, wow, they, they did not have to go to exorbitant heights initially because people just went along with it. They swallowed the bullshit. And for me, that was the biggest O M. Gee, like, oh, ho, ho, ho. people are falling for this shit. Because, I mean, as soon as they said, shelter in place, you can't go out, you can't. It's like, what? Yeah. It's the freaking flu. Hmm. It's just a little bit worse than the common cold. Yeah. And wait a minute. Y'all with your forced vaccinations hmm. have pretty much tanked a lot of people's immune system. So that's why they're getting sicker with this shit. Because... Y'all did this, but oh no, it's a new bug. And it's COVID-19 because it came out in 2019. Hmm. So that's the only reason it's got the freaking 19 on it. You know what I named the show tonight, coincidentally? What's that? Heads I win, 
tails you lose. Well, well. Well, that's the game these fucking idiots are playing with us. And oh, yeah. The majority. Yeah, that's why you just don't play. Ninety-something percent of the fucking population is believing the exact opposite of what is physically fucking possible. Because they saw a goddamn virus movie and zombies and all this made up shit over, you know, 40, 50, 60 years. It's left its impression in the, you know, the conscience. <laughs> People believe that this stuff is real and it's made up nonsense. Yeah. And then the stuff that is real, like the things I've done with my personal business on the internet, you know, like being in Scotland and end up in Denmark, those things are impossible. People don't do those things. <laughs> but, yeah. hey, let's have a fucking global virus and ruin people's lives just because we can. And they got shown... Well, in that's the, why it's all called programming. Because that's what they're doing. They are programming your mind to accept this. And they've blurred the line between reality and, and uh, entertainment so badly that... <laughs> They started using reality TV as entertainment back hey. way back in the day. Well, yeah, yeah. So it's not surprising a lot of people are falling for the shit because yeah, there's a whole generation that grew up thinking that reality TV was real. Oh, uh, see, I don't think I've ever seen reality TV. Oh, my girls. Uh, when the real world yeah. first started on MTV, yeah. my girls just absolutely uh, loved that show. And I watched like three of them. No, nah, when, and, when MTV And I stopped, found, you know, once I figured out, you yeah. know, seeing uh, like three of them and not the full show, but, you know, <laughs> bits of three uh, of them, I finally went, no. Wow. No. Nah. Y'all ain't watching this shit. I'll wow. break the TV before you watch this again. I quit watching MTV when it started. I think that was like well, in the video 80s. killed the radio star. Was, so. Must have been. I, I think it was in Tennessee in the early '80s when the first time I saw MTV on a TV. Because I, I was l living, bouncing around from places here and there, all over the place. But I stopped in Knoxville for a few months, and I remember this. Uh, I think it was a YouTube video, and now I went, "Wow!" Because I'm not a big Bono fan. Anyway, but uh. You, I, what's that? MTV didn't didn't catch. See, I'm always outside of the group. Groups and me don't get along. Wonder what it is. Must be my bad attitude. <laughs> Maybe it's your bad attitude, and I'm just catching it. Uh oh. No, my bad attitude is my bad attitude. Is it? You just you grew accustomed to it and said, yeah, yeah. Who are you waiting to say you're fired? Um, I'm waiting for Trumple to so, do that because you know that's what he did on his reality TV show. Oh, see, You're there fired. you go. No. So I'm waiting for him to do that. Now, the, sadly, the closest I've ever been to a, a Trump television show is the advertisement on the bar TV advertising he was going to be on at a time I wasn't going to be watching because that's not what I did, you know. <sighs> I, I missed, yeah, I missed years yeah. and years of programming because I didn't watch TV. And when I did TV? watch TV, it was always like movies or, yeah, TV shows very, lately, like the last eight or five, eight or, five or eight years, something like that, I've been watching the reruns on YouTube and shit, catching up with all the crap I missed. But not, yeah, I'm most of it. Yeah, I'm watching old reruns on Netflix and on Roku yeah. Cause yeah. New TV is like, uh, really? Y'all watch this shit? Good God. Hey, fucker. It's absolute rubbish. Well, of course, see, yeah. that's, we're old, see? That's the whole, that's the catch. They, they do this to every generation. You're not in tune with my gen Well, no, because you're vibrating on a frequency that's more destructive than the one I'm vibrating on. And I can feel that. <laughs> what are you talking about, hippie? <laughs> oh, I know. Well, they tease you. I'm telling you, there's something about being around my plants. When I'm alone with my plants, it's almost like there's another reality I can step into. 
You know, oh, I yeah. can see the plants and for moments they seem to be vibrating in my vision, yep. you know. And I've got really bad vision, so I just assume I'm seeing a little blurry thing for a minute. It's no big deal. Then I thought, well, well they're all waving to you. But wait a minute. But there's, I'm not talking about with windows open or nothing, just me in the room. And, and if I, know, I, if your I just. plants are waving to you. They're okay. going, yo, over here. You're a plant. A drink. See, you're a plant person. And you know, the, you know these things. You see them in that same reality, I think. But probably more, more, more like search. You know, and yeah. I, I'm like a spectator. I've got capabilities, but uh, not a lot of experience with, like, the nature side of the world. You know, not at the flower-growing level. I was doing bigger things, stream clearance and slash burning. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> trying to help the environment where it needed help. Yep. Because sometimes you can't wait for nature to correct itself. It gets log jammed or something gets overgrown or not enough sunlight and it withers and you need to burn it before it gets electrical fire and has a forest fire. Shit like that. Uh-huh. Well, it was 40 years ago. I was a lot younger. <laughs> but, you know, I've had this life where I've been able to go to different countries and different cities and states and do whatever the fuck I pleased. And a lot of it was for money. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, but, yeah. You know, you just you just went where you went. That's kind of like, yeah. I didn't travel quite as far as you did, but I kind of just kind of. Oh, there's people that have traveled so much more than I did. Jeez, it's not like a contest. It's just the. Uh, yeah. It it's the being alive at this end of you know this time in life, right? The end of things. I mean, I'm 60 years old, right? <laughs> I don't feel 60. I probably look it. I threw my beard out. It's all great. <laughs> you know, well, but, maybe maybe you're just reaching the end of the gestation period and you're getting ready to birth into a new life. I don't I don't you know. know I don't, that, um, what, Dr. Zach? Dr. Zach Bush. I think that's what his name is. <laughs> He's got a great uh, name. Uh, yeah. Jeb's um, brother. Uh, on um, the high wire. Oh, man, that last, like, 11 minutes of that video, that interview video, oh, good God, had me in tears. Which one? Because just so, um, I shared it the other day. Let me see if I can find mm. him again, because that, that was an absolutely amazing video. Mm. Um, let's see if I can find it. Hi, Wire, there it is. Oh, they're Still talking victory. about... They yep. had the, Rob works. They okay. had the vaccine weeks. I was stalling for you, but you find oh, thank it. Thank you. Yeah, they he cut it down to the last little bit that hmm. where Zach is talking. I think that's what this is, okay. and it's wow. Oh. Um, well, if it's a link, verbal link, I can't hear it. You crazy. It's a man. video. Yeah, that, I'll throw it in I'll the notes. In the... For your later on down the road pleasures on the in a perfect world podcast yeah we've been all over the board tonight me and mary i like to do the weird shows so yeah you never know what kind of man, I've, i was listening to old shows today purposely that me and you did to see how far back do we go stating on the radio what that this is all a bunch of crap and you know what i found out what it's been the what we've said ever since the fucking first time we had to talk about this. Uh, I I tried to uh, I was the right way to put it. I tried to be logical and make sense of this unbelievable crap, but the more I I, I the more I spoke of it, the more I realized now nah, this is just the system doing what the system does. You know, there's no other way for me to look at it. I tried. And it didn't work. So yeah, this is just unfucking believable that so many people could be so easily uh, guided along and instructed yeah. and told what to do without any any resistance. Yeah. Wow. Well, nuts. The next one's going to be ten times worse. 
Cause... Well, Grimmy just shared this what? in the RLM. Yeah. In the Middle Ages, orgies were celebrated when the plague was defeated. So does anyone know if something's already planned? <laughs> I don't know. I'll try Hansel. <laughs> Is it in the Woik? I made a Hansel joke and everything. Wow. I know. You're welcome. Well, you know, hmm. you know, a well, threesome is when three people are together. A twosome is when two people are together. And a handsome is when just you and your hand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, fancy a thing like that. Yeah, well, well, I guess when you go onto a site and you start bashing women, it's Kind of hard not to end up the butt the butt end of one of those hand job jokes. So I don't know. I I've tried to tell the guy. You know, he every time he comes around, my wife just loves me that much more. Oh yeah, he makes me look like the most wonderful guy in Denmark. I'm telling you. Well, there you go. Because he does I, serve a purpose. Because I don't talk stupid like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah. I don't. I don't bash gender. I don't. I don't even bash the genders I don't believe exist. I just think there. Uh -oh. are, there's a lot of people looking for attention that ain't gonna ain't, should be looking somewhere else. <laughs> Dude, I don't Beatles care. Beatles eating his nuts right now. Yeah, Beatles. So what? Beatles eat nuts. <laughs> weirdo. He's trying to be the weirdo of the night on the, in a perfect world show. I get it. I get it. Well, let me ask you seriously. How uh, since the accident and you know, everything, how much attention was paid to you over this Corona crap virus while they were trying to save your happy ass from croaking? Um. Well, I think they just took my temperature a couple, and every time I go in for X-rays, they take my temperature. Other than that. Mm. Well, that's what I mean. Are, do, when you visit your doctor, is this the big hoopla made about Corona, 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 or is it just a fucking doctor visit? I, I have no idea. It's just a doctor visit. Ma, 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 Corona. Well, that's what I mean is they've made this big thing. All oh, the hospitals are all overflowing with dead people and Corona people lined up for miles outside waiting to get tested. And then you go to a fucking hospital and you know what you don't see? People. people. Sick people. And you, <laughs> excuse me, you know what else? Um, my specialist visits, other than one um, in person visit, have all been phone consults. And yet, because I'm starting to see some of those bills trickle through, um, the insurance sends me little notices of this bill and that bill and whatever. They still charge the same amount whether I come in to their facility or not. For a phone visit, they're still charging the same amount right. for the visit. Right. And it's like, dude, seriously, that's the racket that they're doing now. Hmm. Oh, wait, it's a phone visit because we're afraid of m -m 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 corona, but we still got to charge you for our time and for the usage of the facility, even though you're not using the facility. So, yeah, I have noticed that. I saw a nice little meme today on the minds.com. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Three cops without masks arresting a woman for not wearing a mask. Three cops without a mask arrested a woman without a mask. I think they arrested her because hmm. she didn't have the magic badge. I don't really care. This whole fucking nightmare is too much. Uh, it's it's so obvious that this has got nothing to do with anybody's fucking health at all, ever, anywhere on this planet. Ah, yeah. crying out loud. Oh, well. It's just hard to believe that at this point where we are that anybody could support a government. I mean, it's, fuck, none of them. I don't support the one I'm living under. No. But, I, yeah. Hey, what can I tell you? I'm not a. I'm just not that kind of person. I don't like government. 
And I don't well, think I that. I don't like external government. Okay, but. You know, especially when it's very forceful about it. Well, the whole point of your government shit anywhere we are at is all about commerce anyway. So, see? If you don't do commerce, they don't even give a fuck. One where if you live or die, whether you're breaking law, none of that matters unless you're drawing income that they can tax. Outside of that, you don't, nobody bats an eye at you. Yeah. So, hmm. You know what's really crazy? No. Those three cops that arrested that gal for not wearing a mask, mm -hmm. they have room in the jail now for her because they let all the prisoners out because they didn't want them getting sick. I, I've read that. I don't know what to make of that bullshit. How, I, who, I'm sure it's not all of the prisoners. But, I'm sure there's a few potheads that they kept in jail, but yeah. All right. Well, hmm. see, here we're going to go to, uh, I would say, a, a Hansel thing like, where? what's your point of, uh, re what's your reference? Where's your information coming from? Because, what? They're letting people out of jail that did crimes to let people in jail that didn't do anything. Is what it sounds well, like. Chicago. Ah, uh, fuck. I've I've avoided Chicago my whole life. It's not a good reference. Yeah. Uh, but who lit? Wait a minute. I think Zpix is in Chicago or Illinois. Might not be Chicago. I think I heard him say something about that on the show. The um, what do you call it? The Power Hour program with uh, Prince yeah. and Zpix. Oh, I listened to it this today. And uh, they, one of them made a reference of Illinois. I think it was Zpix. Just, mo j I don't know. Just came to mind. Like trivia, I either sometimes know it or I don't. <laughs> Usually, my problem is I know it, mm. but I get stutter fingers, or I will hit enter, and my answer will show first, but somebody else will get the credit from barman, and I think somebody else is tipping barman. That's yeah. What I think. Well, I traded my Neo Druid toenail clippings in for a voodoo doll of Grimner. Oh. I, yeah, I put a stutter finger curse on it Sunday. It worked a couple times. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Ooh, that's how you do that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, desperate times call for dr drastic measures. That's true. I'm just tickled if I can get one or two answers right yeah. during trivia. Then yeah. it's like, booyah, my life is complete. Well, it's mostly the so. speed. Yeah, the typers. Some yeah. of those type. If five people know the freaking answer to one question, and they're all like within a second of each other. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like too Moose funny. Moose and Kate yeah. and Grimm. It's like, <laughs> holy crap. Okay, Moose and Kate and Grimm are playing. I'm just going to yeah. sit back and watch because... Yeah, I won't even finish reading the question before they've got it. Do 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 so and so and and I'm going wait, yeah. I, I, wait. <laughs> now, when I did competitive swimming when I was a kid, we clocked right down to the tenth of a second on a stopwatch. Uh huh. And wow, some of those races were close within tenths of seconds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's not a it's not a strange concept for me, but I still to this day hate the clock. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's such a paradox. Oh, crazy man. about it either. But you know, speaking of races, did you see mm. that horse race I posted? Mm -mm. When it's the Corona horse race today. I it earlier. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't open shit on the chat when I'm doing radio. I can't barely handle the radio. No, stuff I I'm didn't doing. post it during the radio. Well, then I missed it. But I'm posting it now. Well, then post it now. Because it's a way cool horse race, <laughs> although it was a surprise finish. I really did not expect that one to win. All right. I'm not going to open it while we're talking, though. <laughs> I hope. It's, it's a good one. Or if it's I do. Will it have, like, yelling and screaming? Yeah, I can mute it. It's got an announcer. Yeah, see, that's what I didn't want to do is play the thing and yeah. Have the sound on. Well, see, you you need okay. the announcer part. You really need that part. Yeah, well, I've got an imagination like nobody you've ever known, dear. Trust me. Anyway, I was being sarcastical again, and I'm watching the race. It's the race. Yeah, but you you need the sound and in the you need the announcer part because that's the best part. Oh, well, I can't do that while yeah. we're live, your Heine. 
but I'm watching no, it anyway. No, you can't. So there. That's, yeah. Tell me I can't. And you know what I'm going to do? They whoop on those horses. Crazy. Now, are, you know what? A, a horse is weigh about 900 pounds. Are you kidding me? That yeah. little. Yeah, you're getting their attention at the very most. They're tough. But, oh, man. Those animals, ooh, they're huge. And I only rode yeah. them a couple of times in my life. But, man, they're some big fucking. I'm a small guy, but fuck. I'm a little bit taller than, uh, or just about the right size for a jockey, though. Or I'm just, oh. yeah, or I'm just like, yeah, I'm just under five foot four. And when I was, uh, when I was about sixteen, this guy was trying to get me into riding, wanted me to train to, to be a jockey. And I didn't want to do it. Years and years ago, you know, it's like I, mean, I ran into so many things that I didn't want to try. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of them. And yeah, it looks pretty mean. There's they're whipping on those horses and I think that's just show. I don't think that animal can feel that. Well, they're trying to get him to speed up. Hurry up, hurry up. Get yeah. It go, I, get it uh, but they're so strong though. I I mean horse unless you punch it in the fucking nose. It's a strong animal. Well So I don't know. See, that's what I mean. I, I didn't horses, spend enough but time. But I do have Nerf spurs and a licorice whip. Uh-oh. <laughs> you're, you're armed and dangerous. Well, you know what? That, <laughs> that brings us to the end of the show. Yeah, it does. So, are you dork tabling with me again this week? Uh, I think so. Okay. I don't have any plans to go anywhere Saturday. So If you're available, I'll hostage kidnap you on Saturday and tell you how shitty it is in Kansas. (laughs) Yeah. No, actually. Tell me how shitty it is in Kansas. Well, I know right now it's freaking cold. uh, You know, everybody was all excited. It's Mother's Day weekend. Put your garden out. No, No. don't do it. We had a freeze warning for the last three nights now. Wow. No, 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 no. In May, a freeze warning. Yeah. Well, okay. today the high is 43. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's close. Or no. Yeah, well, that's 48. close. 48. The high. The high today. Hey, yeah, way. Yesterday the high was 43. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to have your garden stuff out yet. I'm going to try and get some stuff out next weekend, but what little I can do. Well, a special thanks to Grimford joining us on the, in a perfect world and throwing the link our way. Yeah, making that was a, awesome. Thank you, Grimmy. Well, he he's making this point, I believe, and uh he makes it on his own program. I thought why not invite him over here and give him a little chance on this uh in a perfect world show. So that takes us yeah. to you want to do the uh good nights you got anything? Good night, Gracie. No, you got anything profound and deep, important? Anything profound? I already dropped my profound. <laughs> <deep. laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, I said I had Nerf spurs and a licorice whip. What more do you want? Crime any Christmas. I'm, Let your mind go uh, wild with that one. I'm Jewish. You got a mortgage? <laughs> I smell profit. No, everything is paid off. Hmm. Including the van I just got, so uh, yay! Well, see, except for I do have wheels again. There yeah. we go. There's my profundity. I have wheels again. Oh yeah, but you also yeah. owe the state tax money so that they don't take it away from you. No, I already tended to that as well. That's all over, done. Till we meet again, and remember, yeah. potassium sulfate. Yes. If you just and vitamin A. Yeah. When you when you consume wow. beta carotene, it helps your body produce vitamin A, which is a wonderful antioxidant. Helps your body rejuvenate itself. Yeah. Helps strong on bones, all that other fun stuff. I learned that by researching sweet potatoes yesterday. So uh-huh. there you go. Well, ain't you the girl from the place that knows shit? I'm. Yeah, I'm a. I'm a search and research. I search and search <laughs> and get really researched. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for coming along and uh, joining me, helping me out through this. I don't do the solo shows very well every time. Sometimes I have fun, sometimes I... So, we're going to... Thank you. It's been fun. Night, Uh, everybody. 
See you next time.